Freakonomics Radio is sponsored by Adidas. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra light polyester upper to the re sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. Rage Late Night with Gabe Marinci on Sports Grid Radio, Sirius XM Channel 204. Scumbags! Let's rage! Sports Rage with Gabe Marinci. Rage all you want. Level two. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Morenci, the pimps, the players, the hustlers, and me. Let's do this thing as we roll on uh, here on the Twisted uh, Tuesday. Uh, we got baseball uh, action. I'll get you updated with the um, the division division odds after tonight's uh, results. And of course, Garrett Cole gets injured. I don't know why. I just have the feeling like this is the beginning of like. <laughs> like it's like the beginning of, like, you know what I mean? Not good things. It's not good things. Like, I hurt my hand. I've injured my hand. And I'm a guitarist. I'm like, God, that's just great. Like, I've got, like, you know, I've got, like, a hand issue. Um, I seem to be breaking anything that I come into contact with. Like, uh, I, you know what I mean? Lights go down, tripods, like, you name it. And... Everything's been going really well. We, we've been killing the football bet. So, we, you know, we did all right with baseball tonight. We only lost that stupid in-game bet that we made on the Marlins. But I got Garrett Cole to win the Cy Young. Garrett Cole gets hurt. All right? I've got Walker Buehler to win the Cy Young. And now here comes Max Scherzer. How the hell, like, at this point, I, got, I don't have money on Scherzer. But I got money on, uh, I've got money on Buehler. I got money on Zach Wheeler. Seems like I got money on everybody. But even me right now, I, it's, it's hard not to say, yeah, whatever, man. Max Scherzer is like the best pitcher. Like the way this guy, is, what's, what's he doing right now with the Dodgers is unbelievable. So I'm almost, and, um, you know, I come into this. <laughs> we're ready to rock tonight. And now it's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. All right. You know, it's, it's sort of like you said, like, don't get your hopes up in life and, you know, you won't be disappointed. I think that's the moral of the story. Don't get, you know, you get your hopes up in this world and what happens? As I stated, I, I tweeted this about Sam Cunningham earlier today. Truly iconic player. Uh, you know, changed basically, you know, white only SEC and stuff. And you know, a couple of people on Twitter Older people, Coach Jeff Reinbold was all over it, said, you know, this is one of his favorite players growing up. But for the most part, people don't care. Like the level of selfishness in today's society, and I don't want to say selfishness, but narcissism, self-centeredism. It's like, hey, look, this legend just died that actually changed the game, and, you know, it was white-only players in the SEC as recently as like 50 years ago, and people are like, oh, you know what, I'm worried about my Astro bet right now. Like the lack, the lack of empathy, knowledge, um, caring, that's the whole thing too like that, that blows me away about today's society. I've never seen, and listen, I've been on this planet for five decades, all right? So I know the 70s, I know the 80s, I know the 90s. I know that now I know, you know, 2010 into this and now into this. But this is by far, by far the stupidest, shallowest, most pathetic generation of them all. Are we having fun yet? Three. The late night anger management class continues. I am Marenzi. We're throwing it down as the Twisted Tuesday. And uh, rest in peace to the USC Trojan great and legend Sam Bam Cunningham, also a New England Patriot uh, legend and a man that uh, revolutionized college football as we know it today. But don't worry, people will be more worried uh, about um, (laughs) 
they'll be they'll be more concerned. They'll be more concerned with pressing issues uh, than than a true icon uh, passing away. And you know, it's funny. At least Sam Cunningham recognized that his time as well. At least he recognized at the time that ah, nothing's changed. What? Just because we won a football game? Yeah, things kind of did change, but not nah, not really. Uh, right? Sort of like perception of reality, like Jacob Degrom. You know, Jacob Degrom. It's hard to believe. I saw uh, a tweet, and was it Sports Seventies? That dude, good Twitter follow, funny funny Twitter follow. Uh, he said, you know, it's kind of crazy, but it's true. Said Jacob Degrom is thirty three years old. And has less career wins than Oil Can Boyd did. Oil, that's there's a blast for the past. I think the Red Sox could use Oil Can Boyd pitching against the Tampa Bay Rays because they, you know, man, this Rays team. This, uh, what, what, what can you say? Like you know, we talk about all oh, the White Sox and the Astros and the Yankees and look at the Blue Jays hit home runs and stuff. Whatever, man, the Tampa Bay Rays, those guys are badass. All right, they'll give you sunburn. All right, so. Who had uh, Mark Few in the uh, which college coach will get uh, busted for drunk driving? I got to tell you, it is. I did not. I did not have Mark Few in the pool. I did not have Mark Few. Gonzaga men's basketball coach Mark Few issued a citation for driving under the influence on Monday night. According to the police report, Few was pulled over on Monday uh, shortly after 8 p.m. in a popular vacation destination in Idaho. Police received a report that he was driving erratically and speeding. His sample was a 119. The legal limit is 0.8. Is 119 a lot? I don't even know. SportsGrid.com. Betting insights and entertainment at your fingertips 24-7 as our team covers the most important topics in sports wagering. Real-time odds, predictive betting models, expert picks, and more. Want the edge? Then get on the grid. SportsGrid.com. Freakonomics Radio is sponsored by Adidas. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra light polyester upper to the re sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. You're listening to Sports Rage Late Night with Gabe Marinci on Sports Grid Radio, Sirius XM Channel 204. We just stepped on their face with a hobnail boot and broke their nose. We just crushed their face. We dumped it over. Late night anger management class. This is Sports Rage. I am Renzi. So as I was saying, I didn't really realize about Mark Few. So 119, as uh, we kick it uh, on the late night anger management uh, class. Uh, 119, it is like depending on his weight and stuff. But it looks like he's not a very big dude. So it looked like he probably, uh, the chart says that he had at least six or seven drinks. So you know, it looks like he it looks like he had a few. So I didn't realize that like he, uh, people were calling about his erratic behavior. Listen, I'm not judging him as a human being on this, right? We all make mistakes. We all do stupid things. It's one you know one thing I will say though, and I've said this before, guys. Um, I really have, and I mean this. Is automobiles and cars are magnets for getting arrested. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how many, how many times have you ever heard a story about NFL football player pulled over walking down the street in South Beach and arrested for, you know, like, how does the story always start? Oh, yeah, he was pulled over, right? Yeah, yeah, you pulled over, and then it just begins from there, right? Whatever you have in the car, all right, you're done. I'm dead serious. And, he, and I know we have law enforcement tuning in. And shout out to the cops out there. 
and uh, you know, the pimps, the players, the hustlers, the people that bust them, and everybody else in between. But I said it before, and I know you guys will know this is true, but you could walk down the street with like a dead body and 18 pounds of cocaine in a hockey bag. You could cross the street in front of the cops, wave at them. How are you guys doing? Have a hockey stick and a hockey bag. They won't stop you. You don't put your blinker on 10 seconds on time and, oh, God, the, out come the guns. You know what I'm saying? And I never heard anybody ever getting arrested for drug driving being hammered in the back of an Uber. I know. I've never been arrested for being drunk in the back of an Uber. And trust me, I've been pretty drunk in the back of Ubers before. <laughs> so it can't happen. Can't happen. I get it. I get it. You know, listen, I'm not stating that it's not a good idea. If you listen, you like automobiles and you want a nice uh, you, you want a nice car and stuff, fine. But don't take it out when you're going out to party. Like that's that's the whole thing. Look at the Mets GM guy last week. Same thing. It's like, come on, bro, you're the GM of the Mets. All right. You can get hammered at the party. No one cares. You got hammered at the party, fine. And then even after, I guess after the party, because he left the party around 9 or 10, and he got busted at 5 in the morning. So clearly, he kept the party going after. All right, fine. But that's where you tell your boss, Cohen, you were at his house. You say, listen, sir, I've had a few. I'm going to go out to the local country club here. Or no, I'm going to go, right, I'll just sleep at a guest house tonight. I don't, I don't like... Uh, I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't get, like, those decisions that, like, you know, and the whole thing is, too, if you're, I, I find that, listen, if you're a coach, it's a problem because you lose the moral high ground. You really do. And I know because when I, I played hockey, I had played hockey and I had a bunch of different coaches and stuff and, there were like different levels of like there is different levels of respect for each coach, right? I had one coach that was like an old man, right? Like he was really respected. He'd been around forever and stuff. He was literally like seventy. He was like a like he was like an old man type of thing, and he was sort of grandfatherly like. You know, he was kind of tough, but he was nice. You know what I mean? At the same time, and he was one of those guys who was like, yeah, you don't want to let him down, like. Don't don't do anything stupid. Like you know, if you're gonna do something stupid, don't do it in front of them. At least you know what I mean. Like don't like you know what I mean. He's one of those nice guys. He kind of knows what you're up to, but he's not gonna call you out as long as you don't do it in front of. Him. Like it was one of like so sort of like that's what I liked about that generation. Like the older like old people in that generation, like people like they were in the from the 40s and 30s. Like they, so when they were coaching in the 70s and 80s and the 90s and stuff, they knew. They knew, like, that, yeah, listen, my players are drunks so or my players are doing, but, like, it was sort of like, listen, just don't play well in the game, don't do it around me, and everything's fine, right? I had another coach. Uh, I had another coach um, who played in the NHL. And, like, you know, not even that long ago, like, after he coached us, he wasn't retired for that long. Uh, Donnelly. Uh, Gord Donnelly played for the Quebec Nordiques and some other teams. He had a brother, too, the Donnelly brothers. And uh, he was really cool, right? So you sort of looked up to the guy, and you, you'd listen to him because you're like, well, listen, this guy played the NHL for all these years, and if he's telling us something, we just, you know what I mean? We believe him, right? Like So, like, we bought into him. We liked him, and he was cool. And I remember I had another coach. I had another coach who we all liked. He was cool. But the thing is, he had personal issues, right? So don't, don't we all? But he had personal issues. And, you know, like he was getting divorced. He was drinking. You could smell booze on his breath. Like you'd see him sort of with a flask, take a quick shot, like, you know what I mean, in between periods and stuff like that. And he was kind of a nut job and stuff, right, during the practices because he was angry at life so and stuff like that. So he would kind of be nuts, and he could get kind of over the top with the players a bit. And the thing is, what I'm getting at with this is, it was like, dude, like you know, like he he got like he would get upset, like you know what I mean, about drinking and drugs and stuff like that on the team, and players would just like say, dude, man, like 
we know you got busted for drunk driving the other night. Like, dude, like, you know what I mean? We see your car outside the, the motel bar every night, coach. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, he couldn't hide it. Like, his life was sort of like, you know what I mean? He couldn't hide it. And, and then players started throwing it back at him. And they were like, dude, no offense, coach, but... You're drunk right now, so what are you gonna do? What are you what are you gonna do? You know what I mean? It was one of those deals, and it got to the point where he would go, oh, yeah, and then he'd almost want to fight the player. He'd want to fight us and stuff. And I I tried to stay away from the guy. Cause I was like, I don't I don't like dealing with this guy. I know he's nuts and stuff. He's erratic, so I don't want to deal with the guy. So I tried to stay out of his way. And uh but finally, they replaced him because they were like, listen, you're too erratic and you've lost control. And let me tell you, that team, man, was the wildest team that I ever played on. Like, we got into massive brawls and stuff because he didn't stop it, right? Because he was like, oh, kill him, kill him, right? And it's sort of like Rex Ryan. Like, Rex Ryan's a cool dude. Rex Ryan's like a funny guy, and he's a crazy dude and stuff like that. But you notice Rex Ryan, every one of his teams always lead the league in penalties. Why is that? Because they, they know. Well, he's not going to get mad at you. He's crazy, too. Like, he's just, he, he didn't even see you get that personal foul. He's too busy yelling at the ref right now. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's all about leadership. And like I said, listen, you're not at BYU. It's all right. And I guess what, I guess at Gonzaga, what's the deal? He could just sort of say sorry and stuff and get confession. It's like, ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 1.19 is pretty, it's a lot though, isn't it? By, by, you know, by arrest standards. As I stated. All right, as I stated, nobody cares about how drunk you are when you're walking down a sidewalk, all right? They don't. Trust me, I've been drunk on sidewalks before, and I've never been arrested for it, besides once in Orlando. But I didn't get arrested. I got detained in question. <laughs> for literally standing on a sidewalk, outside of a sports bar, waiting for a taxi. Welcome to Orlando. Hi. It was just a misunderstanding. Bring it. SportsGrid.com. Betting insights and entertainment at your fingertips 24-7 as our team covers the most important topics in sports wagering. Real-time odds, predictive betting models, expert picks, and more. Want the edge? Then get on the grid. SportsGrid.com. Freakonomics Radio is sponsored by Adidas. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra light polyester upper to the re sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. Classic moment. This is sports rage. Man, college football was funner in those days. It's great to have college football back and stuff, but it's so anticlimactic now, isn't it? Right? Like they've they've eliminated everybody and everything. And it's not Alabama's fault that they're better than everybody. So I'm not I'm not calling out I'm not blaming Bama for this. They can thank Sam Cunningham though, right? It just blows my mind that that it was only fifty years ago. I was born in nineteen seventy. It blows my mind in 1970, 
that Alabama was all white. I, you know, I'm just saying this for myself personally, but if I was black and I was like a stud player, I wouldn't play there. I'm just throwing it out there. Like, I would take that personally. I would. Like, I'd be like, 19, 1970. <laughs> 1970. Jackie Robinson was playing with the Dodgers in the 50s, man. In the 40s. He played in Montreal in the 40s, the Dodgers. 1970? Nah. I'm good. I'll go play somewhere else, thanks. I'm just saying. I get it. They get players that, like, are from there, right? And I can't, listen, I'm white, so I can't speak for people. I, I'm not a blue chip player. I can't speak for others. I'm just stating for myself and my own personal pettiness and my own personal <clears throat> vindictiveness. I know myself. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. There's, it's sort of like, um, I hate, you know. I hate to throw it and say it, but it's true. There's a lot of players in the NBA. They'll, they won't play for the Boston Celtics. Like, it's a non-starter. Like, it's just, it's, it's a non-starter. Like, it's like, no, it's not happening. Right? And listen, I'm not saying that everybody that plays for the Boston Celtics has a bad experience and stuff, but, like, there's some players, like Kawhi Leonard, before he got traded to the Raptors, the Celtics, like, really had some big offers. Like, Danny Ainge was all in on Kawhi Leonard. And Kawhi Leonard, like, was like, he said, like, absolutely, positively not. I will not go. Like, don't do this deal. No. <laughs> like, I will not go. And then he said, Toronto? And he said, fine. Right? Uh, AD threw it out there that said, I'd never play for Boston. All right? Others, like, it's, it's out there. Right, And I think that's one of the reasons why Boston finally got rid of Danny Ainge. Well, I say finally got rid of Danny Ainge, because Danny Ainge did a good job, sort of, but he never put him over the top. And things were getting worse with their image and reputation. They didn't like the way they treated Isaiah Thomas on the way out. Right, So there just sort of becomes that, there's just sort of that you know, reputation, so to speak. Right? There's that reputation. But listen, I, I, just like I said, it blows my mind it was only 50 years ago. It's kind of sad. It's pathetic, actually. But if you think about it, like what's really insane is, like I said, like Jackie Robinson, guys, was like in the 40s and stuff. Like, like 1970, man. And it wasn't even so 1971. That's embarrassing. Like, there's no other way, Right? Like, it, it just is. It's sad. Like I said, like, you know I mean? When you look back on culture and society and stuff, things have never been good, right? So, like, I, I say, oh, today's this and that, whatever. Things have always been bad. People, there's just more people now. So there's more dumb people just because there's more people. I don't think people are dumber now than they've ever, although people's IQs have gone down. That is a fact. People's IQs, but the thing is, all of our IQs are going down. So... Like, we're all getting dumber by the year type of thing. So, like, if you're tuning in and you're, like, in your 20s, I'm not saying, oh, you're a moron. I think you're kind of probably a narcissist, but I'm not saying you're a moron. <laughs> I'm not saying you're a moron. It is true. We're all getting dumber. When's the last time anybody ever tried to write something? Dude, my, I, was in, I was filling out paperwork at airports and stuff like that. And I had to apologize. I said, look, man, I said, my, uh, my handwriting is pretty bad here. My apologies. I said, I don't really. And, and they, they said, I heard the same thing a couple of times. They said, oh, you're not the only one. They said, nobody can write anymore. Like these kids that win spelling bees, they can spell still. I, you know, I, I, I can't spell anymore. Right? You know, like you punch, everything gets punched in. Right? Like, we've got everything's dumber, everything's easier. Like, with society, with technology making everything easier, we get dumber because of it. We have to think less for ourselves. And therefore, obviously, there's going to be a, uh, obviously, there's going to be a residual effect from this. 
My deal, though, is really just, you know, it's just the, the constant negativity and stupidity of social media and the fake and full outrage of the day. And this gets back to Coach Mark Few, in which some people think he should be fired. All right, because he's the head coach of a university and he leads kids and stuff like that. But I don't believe that he should be fired for this. He's run a clean program for many, many years. He's got a great reputation. Players speak highly of him. There's never been violations. There's never been any real scandal. You know what I mean? People make mistakes. And... We talk about the cancel culture that we live in now, and there's a rush all the time, a rush to judgment to cancel everybody, right? You know, we talked about it like with the uh, the Tubin guy, uh, the the legal analyst dude. He's on CNN. You know the dude. He made his career after OJ and stuff. He's been on TV for years. He worked for the New Yorker magazine, and. Um, he worked for the New Yorker magazine. There was a company Zoom meeting during the pandemic. They had like weekly Zoom meetings, couple of Zoom meetings a week. And uh, whatever, for whatever reason, Tobin decided to uh, pleasure himself during the meeting. He turned the sound down and he thought he turned everything. He basically was ignoring the meeting and sitting there. He said, screw this meeting. I'm going to screw myself, essentially. Right? So his co worker saw it. He got fired from the magazine. Oh, you're an awful person. All right. You know what I mean? Fine. He got fired from the magazine. Like, I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm not his attorney here. Right? But so he was also on CNN. And they didn't put him on TV for like a year or something. And blah, blah, you know, he went to, you know, he went to therapy and all that, and all that. I apologize to my wife and, you know, all that type of stuff. So, you know, he went, he went to therapy and all that, whatever. He wasn't on TV for like over a year, even maybe even longer and stuff. He was off TV for a while, but he's back. And people were like, oh, my God, how do you rehire this guy? And like, and I'm just thinking, so like, you know, are we in society now? Well, like Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman became a bigger star after the incident in the theater, right? Like, really, you're going to ruin the guy's life because he was tugging it during a Zoom meeting? You want to fire him from the New Yorker magazine? Go ahead. Like, I'm just stating. So, my whole point is, so now they're out for Mark Few. Oh, he's a coach of young men in the Jesuit school. No, no, no. Don't the Jesuits uh, preach forgiveness? Hey, he makes amends. He confesses. You know, hey, it is what it is. Yeah, no, nobody's perfect. That's you know, that's the that's the moral of the story. And I think we uh, the era that we live in now. It's almost like the NBA salary cap, where everybody's like a star player, and it's not really true. Not everybody's a max player. It's the same thing now. It's like the little boy that cried wolf, which I'm sure nobody knows the story now, <laughs> but. Um, the point is, if people cry and bitch about everything every day and everyone, eventually people will just tune you out, right? And nobody, you know, nobody pays attention to the real things anymore. And to get deeper, actually, that's how, that's how we're in the world that we're in, actually, Right? The powers that be love that stuff. Argue about, you know what I mean, Fox News. Argue about Trump. Argue about sports. Argue about stuff. And get angry about stuff. Meanwhile, the stuff that you would really shock you, you're not paying attention to because you're too caught up in the petty crap. Right? And it's sort of a setup that we all fall for. So you sort of got to pick your spots of outrage. And my, my outrage just sort of starts with the... The lack of sort of, you know, the same thing like Jackie Robinson. Like, how many even players at baseball know Jackie Robinson's story? They don't. They don't care. Right? Like, they simply they, they simply don't care. Like, you look at the NFL players, and I spoke to Kyle Turley about this at length, and he said, you know, he said the NFL themselves put up less resistance to put money up than the former, like, the players do. 
You know what I mean? Like the NBA players actually started a fund. They started a fund for former NBA guys and for them themselves in the future. It's like a players fund that they did on their own. The NBA Players Association. SportsGrid.com. Betting insights and entertainment at your fingertips 24-7 as our team covers the most important topics in sports wagering. Real-time odds, predictive betting models, expert picks, and more. Want the edge? Then get on the grid. SportsGrid.com. Freakonomics Radio is sponsored by Adidas. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra light polyester upper to the re-sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. The winning edge right here. And you won't take a hoof to the head. No! This is the Sports Grid Radio Network. You're listening to Sports Rage Late Night with Gabe Marinci on Sports Grid Radio, Sirius XM Channel 204. Hitting is not about muscle. It's simple physics. Calculate the velocity V in relation to the trajectory T, which is G gravity, of course, remains a count. <laughs> It's not complicated. Now, who are you again? George Costanza, assistant to the traveling secretary. You're the guy who put us in that Ramada in Milwaukee. You want to talk about hotels? You want to win some ball games? You won the World Series. Six games. <laughs> the late night anger management class. This is Sports Rage. So Blake Snell didn't get the no-hitter, but he just keeps uh, killing it right now. Uh, man, this guy's uh, hot, but it's amazing that the vision's just smoking uh, hot as a, as a whole, uh, isn't it? So I and Marenzi, we're kicking it. Um, it's the Twisted Tuesday. We're back, and we're raging uh, here this evening. Uh, ignorance is the word of the day today. It's like Pee Wee's Playhouse. What's the word of the day? Ignorance. <laughs> you know what? It just sort of set me off because I, you know, earlier in the day, earlier in the day, I when I saw that Sam Cunningham passed away, I'm like, man, that sucks. And, and it was like, wow, what an impact this guy has had. And I knew, I was like, no one will care. I was like, no, no, it won't matter. I'm not going to say no one will care. PLs, people, older people will care, smart people will care, people will care about history, but I was like, you know, it really is amazing just you know, how quickly it doesn't matter what you accomplish. Like, basically, I hate to be grim here, but I guess that's it's a Twisted Tuesday. It's the Grim Show tonight. Put it this way. If this guy was like a national champion, one of the greatest New England Patriot players ever to play the game and basically changed an all-white SEC as we know it, and he maybe got about 10 or 15 minutes of social media push before it went on to whatever. Carson Wentz is concerned about protocol and and blah, 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 blah. Like So basically think about how meaningless like we will be when we're gone. There will be absolutely nothing. The world will not stop for a split second. And it's kind of, you know, I remember I saw an interview with Mick Foley and he was talking about Owen Hart's passing and they didn't stop the show. They didn't stop the show, of course, right? They kept the show rolling on. Now, they said after a while we didn't know that he died, but they, they knew, right? They just sort of, they were like, well, we don't know what to do, so let's just keep on going here and act like nothing happened and we'll deal with it after. And Mick Foley was asked, should they have stopped the show? And Mick Foley said, it's not the time, so he's a company guy, but he said, he goes, well, I'll tell you what. He goes, I'll tell you, if I came plummeting down from the ceiling and died in a ring, he goes, I hope they would stop more than the show. He goes, I hope they would, like, you know, that the world would stop for a day at least. Right? Like, he goes, I hope people would stop for, like, a day and at least go, wow, wow, what a tragedy. Right? But no, they didn't you know, stop the show. 
So that's sort of what just upset me. I see these stories and stuff like that. And and I, I see this and I'm like, man, you know, whatever. Like people, people just, they get caught up. I guess it's, I'm not blaming people for it. It's the constant news cycle that like is tossed at us all the time, right? So there's, you know, they're throwing things at you constantly to be upset about and it's easy to get caught up in it. Look, I got caught up in my rage tonight about our phone lines, which I think is justifiable because, you know, it's a different situation, <laughs> but not really. It is what it is. It's part of life, right? It's, it's part of life. You deal with it and, uh, and you roll on. So once again, rest in peace to uh, to uh, Sam Cunningham. And you know what? Actually, when we get uh, we got to get Co- the coach Rimbo back on, Matthias. Uh, we'll talk. The Ty Cats uh, are winning some games now. I took them the other night, but I actually saw him tweet. I saw him tweet today. I retweeted it that it was his favorite player as well, and that's what got him to be a USC Trojan fan. Which is uh, pretty interesting. Man, the USC Trojans had some badass uh, running backs, huh? Uh, over the years. So, I, I wanted to get to this story here. I want to get some, we'll get into some NFL talks, some of these games here. But Tom Brady, Tom Brady's like unhappy about the number changes in the National Football League. In which defensive players are now allowed to wear whatever number they want. So he said, like, so, you know, he's talking about how confusing it is, and it's not, it's not fair. And, you know, what, what if they, the offensive linemen wore all, different, uh, all, wore all different numbers? And, you know, players wouldn't be able to know who's eligible. So, it's, you know, I don't know. It's, with Tom Brady, it's like Jedi mind trick. So, like, what, what's his angle here? What's he getting at? So Tom Brady took issue with one NFL rule change that it affected his preparation into the first regular season game against the Cowboys. The NFL expanded the uh, the jersey numbers for this season. And it's going to get crazier next year, actually. Because, yeah, if you guys don't know in the NFL this year, you're allowed to wear basically whatever number you want. All right? They, they became much more lenient. I don't know why the players cared so much about this, but they did. So the players got their wish, except the NFL being the NFL, even though they have a gazillion dollars, uh, basically said, you can do this, but we already have all these jerseys made. <laughs> so however many jerseys are made of you already, you have to pay for them and buy them. How crazy is that? I uh, so got a deal. So the NFL basically thought that players wouldn't want to pay. Some guys did pay. I guess next year you won't have to pay, but I think this year you did if you wanted to change your number. So the NFL expanded the rules jersey for numbers this season, allowing running backs, tight ends, fullbacks, and wide receivers to wear jersey numbers 1 to 49 and 80 to 89. Defensive backs will be allowed to wear numbers 1 to 49, linebackers 1 to 59, and 90 to 99. Offensive linemen between 50 and 79, and defensive linemen 50 to 59. And 90 to 99. No changes to quarterbacks, kickers, and punters numbers. Tom Brady doesn't like it. At all. Uh, The number rule is crazy. Literally, guys, change your numbers today. I'm playing two guys who had different numbers in the preseason. So, yeah, you've got to watch film and know you're studying. uh, But so do the running backs. They've got to know who to block. So does the offensive line. So do the receivers who are adjusting to the routes based on blitzes. So one guy's got a number six, and another guy's got a number 11, and now one guy's now got a number nine. And they change every play when you break your routes and you get to your spot. It's going to be very challenging. It's a good advantage for the defense, but uh, it is what it is. Brady predicted they're going to be going to be matchups where certain players will be blocking the wrong guy. He also expressed his concerns about this uh, in April when it was announced. Tom Brady stated on Instagram, good luck trying to block the right people now. Going to make for a lot of bad football. Um, as uh, <laughs> Brady, I gotta tell you, I'm starting to like Tom Brady in his elder years here. Like Maybe Brady should be the commissioner after. Brady goes on to say, I've been in the league for 20-plus years. You know, I don't speak up on a lot of things, but when I see things that are really stupid, I have to speak out. Like uh, when I see things about the union. <laughs> like Brady. 
<laughs> Brady is uh, uh, Brady is uh, like I said. Brady is unloading um, with with old age here. He doesn't like the players' union. He doesn't like this numbers change. I think that Brady has a point. I think he's got a point in a sense, but at the same point of time, he's exaggerating. But it goes to show how serious and dedicated this guy is about his preparation and about everything. That this just bothers him that much. And I don't know. I think he's gonna, you know, he'll light he's gonna light you up even more now. <laughs> he's he's gonna he's gonna light you up even more now because of this. You know, just the sort of, he sees everything. And the thing is, the Cowboys by chance, of course by all teams, what a shocker that the Dallas Cowboys have like the most dudes that are changing their numbers because they all want to look cool. And they want to have a bunch of linebackers running around wearing number two and whatever. And okay, fine. And I mean, you guys want to look cool, go ahead. Like, really? Like, what do you care, man? Like, honestly. So... The whole thing with Tom Brady bitching about this, I get his point, but there's not that many players that change numbers. There wasn't that many dudes that were willing to do it, right? And the dudes that were willing to do it did it because they didn't have to pay a lot of money to do it. Like, if you're not a big-name player, like, who is it? Like, Jalen Smith changed his number? How many Jalen Smith jerseys were made? Really? A couple of hundred? A couple of hundred in the Dallas area, maybe. A couple others like scattered around. Like honestly, how many? How much did he? You know, how much did he really have to pay for this? And he's not paying full value. You know, they're getting the deal. They're not. You know, what I mean, they're not paying 119 bucks a jersey for this. But he does have to buy his own jerseys back. I would. I tell you what. I would want the damn jerseys. You know what I'm saying with this? If I'm an NFL player, and I and they're like, oh, you can change your number now. Oh, that's cool. And they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, though, for you to do it, Marenzi, you have to give us $28,000, right? I'd be like, all right, I'm going to give you the $28,000. I would give it in pennies, number one. I really would. I'd hire some dude to deliver to the head office. I'd just hire a company in New York. Please deliver $28,000 in pennies and bags to the NFL headquarters. Uh, here's your $28,000. And then, and then I'd say, where are my effing jerseys, man? I, I want them. You guys aren't, and I, I guarantee you the league would screw you around on this and say, wow, we don't really have them all at all. Well, we have to take a while to get them. I'd say, no, 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 no. You want me to pay for them. I want all of the jerseys. I'm going to give them to homeless people outside the stadium in the parking lot and in fans just so they don't buy gear in the stadium, too. I told you. Like, uh, I'm out for pettiness and vindictiveness. That works out, man. I don't see the problem with that. I I'm with you. If I want to change my number, I better be able to change my number. Change my number. Yeah, no, and honestly, like, I understand, all right, for rules, uh, you got to wait, but they want you to buy all the jerseys that are already made. It's like, okay, fine. But you better give me the damn jerseys. Like, I want the 3,000 jerseys. And like I said, I'm going to give them to people in the parking lot outside the stadium just to piss you guys off <laughs> like, right now like, after this. You know what I mean? I'll give some to, like, you know, like homeless groups and, like, kids and stuff. But I, I tell my agent, listen, give away, like, 100 or 200 of these jerseys in the parking lot. Like, it'll make me popular. And uh, it'll upset the team because <laughs> they'll sell less merch today. <laughs> 30 seconds. <laughs> so next year when this is free, it's going to be crazy. But hey, the thing is, people have been wearing crazy numbers in college football forever, right? Nobody cares. Okay. That's just, I think Tom Brady's just sending a message to his own players. You guys better not screw up because they change your numbers. I'm going to be pissed. 
SportsGrid.com. Betting insights and entertainment at your fingertips 24-7 as our team covers the most important topics in sports wagering. Real-time odds, predictive betting models, expert picks, and more. Want the edge? Then get on the grid. SportsGrid.com. Freakonomics Radio is sponsored by Adidas. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra light polyester upper to the re sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. I just can't live without Rage Hall. <laughs> Late Night Anger Management Class. This is Sports Rage. I am Marenzi. All right, we got Rick Saratella on the radar uh, here this evening. Four level threes. The countdown is on the National Football League. We're ready to do this thing. I did take a brief look. And, you know, college and football is always overwhelming. Uh, listen, we're going to pat ourselves on the back. We did a great job last week uh, with the games. We're, we're, uh, we're going to hope to try to nail it. It does get trickier as we go on. There were a lot of easy spots uh, last week. Uh, but as far as the national football, we were sort of focusing in on the NFL because college was here. It was like, all right, it's time. The Buccaneers are now eight-point favorites. The total is 52 for Thursday night football. We talked about these numbers earlier, and we'll, we'll throw them at you again in case you missed them. But they've been doing this Thursday night stuff for 21 years now. And the Super Bowl favorite generally always wins and covers. I don't know why, what it is. You know, I mean, they get set up. They usually get set up in a pretty favorable situation, to be honest. It's very wrestling-like. <laughs> like so. It's like you're, you're the sacrificial lamb, man. It's like, why, why the, think about this too. Why are the Dallas Cowboys the team to do this? Like, I guess they're the most glamorous ones. Are they like, like they're, they're not the best ones, right? This isn't like, you know what I mean? And like I said, it's like wrestling. If the, if the, if the NFL wants to make your life easy and you're the defending Super Bowl champ, they'll give you a cakewalk. Like they're giving the, the Buccaneers the Cowboys. They're eight point favorites. Sometimes you'll see teams, they'll, they'll, oh, you're going to have to play a really tough game. So, it's, you know, of course, oh, it's Dallas. Oh, Dallas. Eight points, total is 52. Okay. All these games seem to be going under the number early in these football leagues, but I have a hard time thinking that there's not points in this football game. Late night anger management class continues. Freakonomics Radio is sponsored by Adidas. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra light polyester upper to the re sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today.